snooker shootout 2011. Ten minute matches. He's going to do it with this red goes in. The 22nd shot clock. He's got it. A modern take on our famous sport. But snooker hasn't always had this razzmatazz. The game didn't take off right away. Joe Davis was the only world title winner until 1946. But the advent of colour television, including one show in particular, would change snooker forever. Pot Black was a one-frame knockout format started by the BBC in 1969 and gave snooker the fresh start it needed. In the 70s, Ray Reardon won six world titles, but Alex Higgins was the audience magnet who was credited for snooker's big liftoff. Steve Davis dominated the 80s, but it was Dennis Taylor who grabbed the limelight. 18 million people watched him win the Black Ball final in 1985, the greatest moment in the sport's history. Stephen Hendry was the dominant force in the 90s with seven world titles and got the better of his great rival Jimmy White. It's only a game, so put up a real good fight. Big Break, hosted by Jim Davidson and John Virgo, was a game show that thrived. It began in 1991 and aired every Saturday for 11 years. The audience, it seemed, couldn't get enough of snooker. <laughs> the late 90s and early 2000s saw Mark Williams take the world number one spot. And he was later joined by the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan, who became the new face of snooker. Throughout the 2000s, snooker suffered from the stigma of being slow and defensive. Yet the game was actually more attacking than in its 1970s and 80s heyday. In the Black Ball final year of 1985, there were just 14 century breaks at the Crucible. In the 2009 World Championships, there were 83. Yet only 3 million people watched the final that year on TV. Somewhere along the line, snooker had lost its appeal. Satellite TV was booming and snooker faced a battle for TV ratings. Fans were losing interest, and so were the players. That was like a dentist appointment, that's what that was like. Absolutely painful from start to finish, you know? It was um, a horrible game. In 2010, multiple world champion John Higgins was banned for six months for giving the impression he would breach betting rules. Snooker had reached its lowest ebb. The solution, Barry Hearn. He was appointed chairman of Snooker's commercial arm in June 2010. Things are about to get a whole lot different. It's over. The shootout was a huge success. Nigel Bond claimed the winner's prize. The real winner was Snooker. I was a little bit sceptical of the Snooker shootout, but I have to say I really, really enjoyed it. It was absolutely fantastic. With the crowd, there's so much interaction, so much banter. You know, it was a packed crowd as well, so it was really, really exciting to play. In. Shootout? brilliant. A, a, a time frame, all of a sudden, everybody was up for it. We all came away for it thinking that was a buzz. The long-standing Premier Leagues had a makeover. Four players contest each meeting, with the winners of both matches playing a final. It's a best of five frames format, and now with a 20-second shot clock. A change that's gone down well with world number 11, Ali Carter. It's good to speed up playing, it stops you thinking about it too much and you know you can get on with just playing snooker and potting balls. But some players aren't so keen. It's hard to stop yourself rushing and uh, it's not that many seconds to take a shot so it's very difficult and it's very hard to settle. New game where points are everything and frames are nothing. If players pot the Powerball, they get two minutes when any points are doubled. Power snooker is different, but does it work? Power snooker have made the mistake of altering too much with power plays, power zones, uh, altering the scoring system. I don't think that um, the, the snooker public has uh, uh, responded to that uh, very favourably at all. So not the desired effect, but there are now almost 30 other tournaments worldwide. 12 of these are the new PTCs, which give players outside the top 16 more opportunity. There are new tournaments in Australia, Germany, China, and even Brazil. A great move by Barry Hearn, 
according to the shotgun Jamie Cope and his fellow pros. You know, I think Barry has taken the game in the right direction. I think it needed something like this injected into it, um, you know, to make it a bit more fun as well as as well as a serious part of it. And I think um, I think everyone thinks it's gone down quite well. It's just unbelievable what he's done in a short space of time, really. And uh, you know, it's, it's the only way he's up as far as I can see. stuck at the minute. With praise comes opposition. Northern Ireland's Mark Allen criticised Hearn for altering the UK Championships. Hearn shortened the format to best of 11 frames up to the semi-finals, much to Allen's dislike. But the fans are being entertained again by a young potting machine. Bristol's Judd Trump is a star in the making, having already won the 2011 UK Championships. Add to that the glamour aspect. Female referee Michaela Tabb has been a welcome addition in snooker's renaissance. Hearn's greatest success is darts. Chairman of the PDC, he's transformed it to the second most watched sport on satellite TV. His changes to darts have worked wonders, but he's been warned. Changes to snooker's biggest showpiece won't go down as well. I'll be the first to jump all over him if he changes the world championship because, as I said, that is the crown jewel in the game. Hearn's target is total prize money of nearly £8 million for 2012 and a tournament somewhere in the world every week. The game's getting bigger in China, with Ding Junhui their star man. And if speed snooker's to succeed globally, then the Chinese need to be convinced. More importantly is not what the kids in this country think about speed snooker. How are the Chinese looking at speed snooker? Do they need speed snooker? The future is looking bright. Six and a half million watched the world final in the UK last year. The biggest audience for six years. The overseas appeal is growing and the players seem to like the new changes. The question is, can snooker continue on its upward spiral?